So what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, Michelle. Uh, How's it going, Bobby? Good, good. It's good to at least almost be all together again. Yeah. Uh, We're getting close. We'll get there someday. Welcome, everybody, to this bonus episode of Flickr Effect. It bonus. is Tuesday, April 18th, right? I think I it got the is. day right. That's correct. It, it is. We don't normally record on a Tuesday. Probably never. I don't know that we've ever recorded on a Tuesday. I don't think that's a miraculous thing to mention, but I am. So whatever. Uh, yeah, we are getting together because we wanted to talk a little bit about Star Wars. It was a big Star Wars weekend. I was out of town for most of it, so I didn't get to record with you guys over the weekend when you did the regular show. So I begged and I pleaded, please don't talk about anything Star Wars until I get back. <laughs> Pretty please. <laughs> And I don't think you guys did. I haven't heard the show yet, to nope. be completely honest. We did not. Um, we were very good. We held all thoughts and opinions about everything that happened this weekend at Star Wars Celebration to literally right now. So yeah. So why are we getting together? Star Wars Celebration happened over the weekend here in Orlando. It was a four-day event. Uh, I don't know how many Star Wars Celebrations this is. They don't number them. They just... Or anything. Not that any con, I guess, numbers them, but... Um, Do they have it every year or does it go usually, every other year? Well, the, the usual pattern, at least more recently, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bobby, I think it's been every year, but one year in the U.S. and then one year in Europe. Right. They had London last year. That's what yes. it was. Okay. So like for the States, it's like every other year. Basically but it's every other year. every year. Right. Okay. I don't know how long they've been doing it like that. Because I want to say when it was in Orlando before, I think it was back to back. I just I know that right. I just know that last year was London and the year before that was Anaheim. Yep. That's all I know. And I don't remember what two years it was in Orlando, but I want to say it was back to back years if I th- remember right. Now this was pre this was pre Disney, I think even buying Lucasfilm, pre anything yeah, to do so with the new Yeah. I forget what years those were. And I never went, which I remember all both times being really disappointed in myself, like, wow, Star Wars Celebration is in town and I'm not going. What the fuck is wrong with me? kind of thing. Mm. But you've never been either, right, Bobby? I mean, it was in Anaheim, yeah, two years ago, yeah. right? Yeah, and I didn't go. I didn't, um, I guess I didn't really know that it was a thing. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I knew, you know, I knew of it, but it just, I didn't seem, I, I think, you know, what it is now that I really think about it is that Star Wars was really just starting to gear up again. And so yeah. it wasn't like it was something that was on my radar. So, I didn't think about it until it was probably after the fact. And I was like, oh, man, I should have went to that. And then, of course, the next year was in London and then this year being in Orlando. So I think the next time they have one around this way, I'll probably go to it. I would say even if because they've announced there'll be one, I think, in the States in 2019, but they haven't said where yet. Mm. If if it were going to be in Anaheim, I would strongly consider making that trip. Yeah. And try to make the whole event. Because I was pretty disappointed that I couldn't make the whole event this year. And it was right down the street, yeah. basically. Um, but, yeah, I just had to go out of town this weekend for a wedding. Had no choice. Uh, and I wanted to go to the wedding. Yeah. Shout out to my friend LaDonna who got married. Very much congrats to her. Nice recovery. Yes. But, no, hey, I, I gave her nothing but shit for picking <laughs> this, this particular weekend for it's her like, wedding. It was Easter weekend, dude. It's a busy weekend. I don't know if I ever even explained that on the show. I mean, I will say she picked the weekend first. And, I mean, it had only been maybe a month or two after she set that date. And the, the announcement came out that it was going to be in Orlando. And I think I was at work at the time. And I you know, had some downtime. I was on my phone and saw the announcement. And I freaked out. I'm like, holy shit, it's going to be right here in Orlando? Oh, my God. I was so excited. And I think the excitement lasted maybe five <laughs> minutes. And it clicked. And I'm like, wait a second. That date seems. April 15th weekend. That sounds familiar. Let me send a text to my friend here. When, when do you get married again? Oh, great. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I mean, I should be clear. I mean, I w- and before I even say this, I would have gone to the wedding anyway. She's very special, very special friend. I would have been there, but I officiated the wedding, so I really had no <laughs> choice but to be there. Yeah, um, you were locked in. I was very much locked into that wedding. So, <laughs> I mean, I even originally was like, "Oh man, uh, so you're getting married Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening? You know what? I'm flying up Saturday morning." And she's like, "Oh, you have to be there for the rehearsal dinner." I'm like, "Oh, you're killing me." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, I guess I'll fly on Friday. So I was able to go to Star Wars Celebration on Thursday. 
The whole day. The whole day. And I say the whole day because you were there quite literally from the start of Thursday, like 12.01 I was almost there 24 hours straight. Almost. Almost. So I decided to get there the night before and spend the night in line. Yes. I had only done that once before in San Diego for the Hall H line one year. And... I got to spend the night out in the lovely San Diego evening weather, which I'm not even being sarcastic. It's quite nice spending the night (laughs) outside in San Diego, really. I mean, at least for those of us who live here in Florida, I thought it was great. Um, But yeah, it was it was one of those things where like I didn't really start looking into the details of like how celebration works until basically like the day before or two days before. And I really started looking at the panel schedule and I started looking at the website on like basically how it works to attend and how you get into panels and how you get wristbands. And I started reading about this sleepover line. I'm like, they have like a whole official sleepover line. Great. This is not a good sign. Yeah. Like if they're basically <laughs> pu- prep for this at push, all. <laughs> pushing the fact that people, they're inviting you to come sleep over in line inside the convention center. I'm like, man, God damn it. If I want to get into this 40th anniversary panel, I'm going to have to spend a night in line. Yeah. And that panel was like the thing for Thursday. That was like yeah. the number one thing for Thursday. I mean, Thursday. basically, yeah, Star Wars Celebration seems to set itself up with one big panel of the day. And on Thursday, it was the 40th anniversary of Star Wars panel. And so I look at the details and, oh, the line opens at 8 p.m. The night before, closes at midnight. So once you get it, if you're in by midnight, you're basically locked in for the night. Reopens at 5 a.m. Originally, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just be there right at 5 but then I'm like reading about how they're not going to let you line up outside the convention center to once those doors open at five, they're not going to let you line up outside and all this jazz. I'm like, well, that's going to be a madhouse of people basically hovering around the doors at 5 a.m., you know? So fuck that. I guess I'm going to just do it. And I got there at like 9:30, 10 ish. And yeah, the line was already a pretty, pretty decent size, but I feel like, I feel like uh, Bobby and I, probably more so you, Bobby, than me, I feel like I've become a somewhat of a line-gauging professional when it comes to like looking at a line, looking at the Hall H line, for example, and going, uh-huh. yeah, we're going to get in. Hey, you guys are pretty good at that, <laughs> I will say. Like, you guys definitely, like... You, you won me over in your knowledge when I was in line for on Sherlock. Sunday for Sherlock. And I'm in line and I'm like, I'm way the hell out in BFE. And I'm thinking, and I'm losing my mind. Cause I'm like, I'm not getting in. I'm totally not getting in. And I'm like, I'm losing it. And you guys are like, dude, you're in the best spot ever. You're totally getting in. Like, I was like, don't mess, my, don't mess with me. Don't mess with my head. Yeah. And yeah, I got, I was in, I was in pretty good. Like oh, I was yeah, like just were, barely in. I was way the hell in. You were like, like thank r- you, Jesus. practically rock star seats where you were Basically. standing. Um, and so yeah, like you guys won me over. You, I'm like, oh, they, they know their lines. They, they got this. So yeah, I was, I'm looking at the line and I'm like, we should be fine. And I'd never really heard official numbers of how big this room was. But I was starting to hear rumblings of like 2,500, which by the way, I think it was more. I believe it was 37 or 3,500. Which is still tiny. But I'm kind of looking at the line and I'm like, we're all in one convention hall at this point. I'm like, I really should be fine. Everyone's spread out in their sleeping bags. They're taking up space. Like once they, everyone gets up in the morning and we compact this little, you know, shindig of a line where I'll be good, you know? And then, you know, midnight comes, they close the line. And I'm an old ass man. Like, I know that basically we're going to have to probably get up at 5 a.m. when they open the doors again. And I'm like, I want to get some sleep. Well, after like around 12, 15, they have a fucking DJ come in and like DJ the line for an hour. <laughs> and which, which probably should have been going on from like 11 to right. midnight. And, and of course, the guy that introduces the DJ, he gets everybody's hopes up. And he's like, yeah, everybody, welcome to the line. You know, you all are, you guys are all guaranteed to get into the galaxy stage. The galaxy stage is the, the room it's going to be in. Right. And to be clear, too, there's going to be two, there's two, like, overflow rooms. The celebration stage, and I think the other one was called, like, backstage something. And you, those were going to be two rooms where they were going to broadcast the panel if you didn't get into Galaxy. But this guy's like, oh, yeah, you guys are all going to get in the Galaxy. Everyone cheers. Woo-hoo, we're all excited. We have to listen to this guy DJ and keep us awake until 1.30 in the morning. And then finally at 1.30 he stops, and I finally get like maybe three hours of sleep. And this is on like a fucking concrete convention right. floor. 
And all I brought, I don't know what I was thinking. All I brought was like a blanket and a pillow. I don't know why the hell I didn't bring like an air mattress. I mean, I you didn't want to carry know. anything around. I didn't. That was my thought. I'm like, I could have grabbed a sleeping bag, but I'm like, oh, then I gotta carry it around with me unless I go back to my car, and I don't know where I'm gonna end up parking. And I was trying to be minimal. Understandable. And yeah, long story short, I didn't get into the the Galaxy stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was pretty pissed. Like I spent the night in line and we start moving forward. And I remember there was this woman right near me in line. And then these two younger, like teen, not, they weren't teens. They were probably in their twenties. These two girls in their twenties right behind me. And they're all, this one girl's worried. She had heard from somebody else like, Oh man, we might not make it. And she's like freaking out. And this other woman is like, Oh man, this is going to be the main panel. They're going to let thousands of people in. And I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know if I'd get her hopes up. Let's take this back. <laughs> like, I mean, this isn't this isn't Hall H. This is, sounds like it's basically gonna be the half the size of Hall H. Like, let's all calm down. And sure enough, yeah, we were like, I want to say, man, maybe a hundred people back, oh. and they, they like cut it off and started handing out the celebration wristbands instead of the galaxy wristbands and. That girl was pretty upset. <laughs> and then the other woman is like super apologetic. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I really thought we would have been fine. And I'm just kind of standing there. I'm like, oh, maybe I should have said something to get this girl's hopes down. But I didn't want to disappoint her. I didn't want to be the asshole. Right. That's like, oh, sorry, honey. You're not going to get in. Remember how that jerk in line was all like, right. we're not getting in. We totally got in. Yeah, what a jerk. Right. I didn't want to be that guy. <laughs> So then I was like torn. I'm like, do I, do I even bother? Basically, I'm going in a room to watch the same stream that everybody at home is watching. Or at work, whatever. Right? Or at work. <laughs> and, but I'm, I, I mean, not like me. And then I'm thinking you? like, oh, well, maybe you have to give out some swag. At least we're here. We're going to get it too, right? Which, by the way, we did not. Um, no, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yeah. The poster? Yeah, I didn't get the poster. Fuck. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? No, like, no. The room should have like, no. We're the here. room should have gotten them. Like you waited overnight. Just because those people made it into Galaxy, they get oh, the poster. Oh no! But we spent the night in line. Had to go. We had. We. You should have given me more <laughs> for having to sit in the celebration stage instead. No. I didn't get shit. I can't believe they gave you guys the poster. No, no, they didn't. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> I was pretty. Pissed. Yeah, I kind of figured that though. I mean, it was really. When I was listening to the broadcast, they said that was pretty much for the people that were in, in the room. So, but yeah, I mean, you can admit that you gotta agree with me. That's that's bullshit. Like, I think because I think it, I think it's bullshit because you were in this line with the intention of being in that room. Like, you went there overnight with the intention to be in that room. Like, yeah, and it feels they, like I at feel least like at you some could, point they could have been like. A consolation prize, guys. Like, Not hey, you didn't get in. Not a consolation prize, but they easily could have, as you guys were filing into this line, been like, you know, that's four thousand, and we got thirty seven hundred seats. And we're, we're gonna have to stay, we're gonna have to tell them to go home. Yeah. Like, well, just I, not let in the people. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they could have easily just been like, yeah, we can't let any more in. Well, I mean, I'll get to that in a second. I definitely think in terms of logistics, and I won't drag on a lot about this. You know, I'm. You know, this could be very boring, but I find it interesting. But sure, in terms of logistics and how they handled the line and how they handled the wristband distribution could have been done differently. Uh, Basically, you could have handed them out the night before. Like, uh, once we were already in line, you basically could have handed out the wristbands and then been like, oh, fuck, I'm not going to get in. I'm going to go home. (laughs) Right. And sleep in my bed. And I'll be here at nine in the morning. Yeah. Or I'll just, yeah, watch on my laptop. And But I will say, with that said, I know I'm kind of bitching that I had to watch it like everybody else, but it was nice being in a room full of Star Wars fans watching it together on a big screen. That is fun. And yes, you weren't in the actual room with the actual stars, but it did kind of feel like it. It did a good mm. job of presenting it in the room. Um, I am a little bitter about not getting the poster, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was nice and it was emotional. That 40th anniversary panel like ripped me to shreds, you know? And, and I think a big part of it too, was watching it in that room with those people. Like, yeah. um, cause like I, you know, came home and showed my wife the, the video that they put on YouTube, the montage kind of piece they put together for Carrie Fisher. And I mean, it's a very good piece, but it doesn't, I don't think it has that ima- emotional impact by itself. Like it did in the context of that panel right. and in the context of watching that panel with a bunch of other fans. Right. Like, exactly. I mean, listening to George's, George Lucas's and Kathleen Kennedy's speech before that. And then, um, what's her name? Billy Lord speak. 
And I mean, already they're getting ready. I knew going into the video, I knew there was going to be some video that they were going to put together. And I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. And it was rough, dude. I was holding back, like just bawling my eyes out <laughs> watching this thing. And I'm saying that as, and no offense to, I don't know how to put this, but Carrie Fisher is great. But I, I'm not saying like I'm some, I was some diehard Carrie Fisher fan, you know. As, as you sit here wearing a I'm, Carrie Fisher Princess I am wearing Princess a Leia, Leia shirt right now. <laughs> I'm, that I'm looking at right now. Yes. But I'm just saying. I, you have you're a literally point. wearing her face on your That's shirt. That's hilarious. But <laughs> please continue. Please continue explaining this to me. I just, I'm saying like, it might sound like maybe like, you know, her death was a really emotional thing for me. And I mean, sure, it, it sucked. I it mean, she sucked. was basically the first like major legendary character of Star Wars to pass away, actress or yes. actor. And it, it was terrible. I think actually I was with you like Christmas shopping or something, Michelle, like when we saw the first yeah. text and I was like, oh my God, you can't, you gotta be kidding. Like, it sounds like she hadn't died yet, but it didn't look good. Right. And, uh, but yeah, it was, That's it was rough. rough. And then <laughs> you watch this video and you see like the wide shot of the room and it, it, there's kind of this awkward moment of silence. Like, oh, nobody's on stage. No one's on stage. And I'm like, are we doing a moment of silence here? Like, what's happening? Like, and they're taking their time panning over. And then the curtain pulls back. And I see the orchestra. And it still takes mm-hmm. a second for yeah. him to turn around and it to click. And I'm like, and I'm think, I had, it's such a mix of emotion at this point. Because I'm like, <laughs> part of me is like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Like, John Williams is fucking here. <laughs> and I'm not in that that room i know i'm dropping a lot of f-bombs today but i was a little pissed (laughs) you're not bitter not at all no No. oh my god but it was amazing i mean sure i was a little pissed i wasn't in there but it was incredible and then already i think everyone is like oh my god that was emotional and we know what they're gonna play first they're obviously gonna play leia's theme and i'm just like i they hadn't even started playing it yet I'm like, dude, you're, you're really trying hard to get me to cry. It's taking everything I have to resist. <laughs> I I don't know that I ever actually did like ball, but it was so close. <laughs> and then I'm listening. I mean, I'll give that French horn player credit. I don't know if he like he sounded like because it was the Orlando Phil. Harmonic. It was the Orlando Phil, and you could almost hear the emotion in the French horn player having to play that solo. I I don't know how he did it, and I'm saying that as someone who used to be a performer, used to be a trombone player in an orchestra. Not that I ever played on that level, but you know, uh, man, I there's no way. <laughs> you know, it was it was an emotional panel. It was really really well done. And I mean, this was a panel, of course, that even though it was the 40th anniversary panel, there was still some speculation. Oh, are they going to go ahead and tease us with something from Last Jedi or something? And they never did, but they didn't need to. Like, No, the point like, was to celebrate the history of Star Wars. And I mean, like, they, like George showed up. Like, George doesn't normally go to these things. He's been to them, but he's not all the time. It's not a guarantee that George Lucas is going to come to this. Right. George was there. Like... Like everybody was there, and then the big surprise was that Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford yeah. showed up. And I mean, because Har- Harrison's never been to a celebration, this was his first celebration, right? Like, that's huge, huge. And so, I'll admit, I'm watching the stream, and Harrison comes out, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty big. Harrison's there, and then, yeah, you know, Kathleen Kennedy does her, um, her speech, and then George does his, and then Billy Lord does hers, and then they have the montage for, for Carrie Fisher. And I'm like, oh, David's probably having a rough time. He's probably a little sad he's not in that room. And then the curtain opens and I see an orchestra. And before I even see him, I see the orchestra and I went, they didn't. Oh, God, they brought him. Oh, God, he's there. And then he turns around. And I'm like, all right, how do I do a Kickstarter for therapy for David? How do I fund this? Because he's going to need therapy after this. Because I'm like, I know that your heart is just crushed. Because you texted me before this whole thing started that you weren't going to be in the room. Right. And I was like, are you kidding? So you knew I like, in yeah, there, yeah, I knew you were in the room. And so like to see John Williams and to hear John Williams play, like I actually teared up a little bit. And all I'm thinking is I got to start a fund me for David's therapy sessions after this. Like he's probably so ridiculously bummed. And like, I didn't even text you after, like I waited like an hour after the panel yeah. was done before I was like, so how you doing there, buddy? Yang? And it okay. 
I couldn't believe they had him there. I mean, it's my understanding he doesn't even really travel much anymore. No, because I don't think when for this, you know, they normally have been recording these scores in London, and yeah. he didn't record the score to Force Awakens in London. I think he did it in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, purely for that reason, because he's, yeah. I mean, he's getting older. He's getting much older. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's I true. mean, like everybody made it here to Orlando this weekend. Like that's impressive. Yeah, that was uh that was a really good panel. Like after that panel ended, I almost needed to like I basic I of course hadn't been into to the floor yet of the convention, but I was like first right. of all I needed to eat. I was hungry. But I was like, I need to sit. I need to sit down and just kinda digest and relax. Which is, <laughs> which just happened. Like a lot of then, emotions. Then I'll go check out if I'm gonna go spend money or not. But for right now I need to chill. And uh yeah, that's basically I spent the rest of my day. I just walked the floor. Um, I hadn't even really figured out if I was going to go to another panel, which I ended up going to one and I'm really, really glad I did. It was really good. Oh, yeah? Uh, I'm, I'll try to see if I can find what his name was. I don't know who, what his name was, who did this panel. And first I'll give credit to the size of the audience that showed up for this thing. Cause it's like, you know, you look at a panel schedule for con and I'm reading the, you know, descriptions and I see this panel that's about the music for rogue one. Oh, Okay. And I, again, I forget his name, but it's going to be this one guy basically talking about the music for Rogue One, mainly because it is the first Star Wars score to not be scored by John Williams. So it was scored mm-hmm. by Michael Cicchino. And it was going to be kind of an analysis of his score. And basically, it seemed like how it was influenced by John Williams and these comparisons to John Williams' work, well, you know, and whatnot. And reading the description, I read that description to you at most cons, even at like a Comic Con or whatever, this would be like a small room. This would be a small panel. <laughs> yeah. No, it was in the galaxy stage. Oh. It was in the biggest room at the convention, and the room wasn't full, but it was almost there. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. You've basically got this guy who, again, I don't know who he was, I forget, but he, he sounded like he was probably like a music professor somewhere. It could be like a music theory professor. He's getting to talk about Jacino's score to Rogue One to like a room of 3,000 people. <laughs> I'm like, I'm impressed that this many people are interested in this. And I got to say, it was really, really good. I mean, sure, I, as a former music major myself and as a musician, I found it particularly interesting. But he definitely presented it in a way that would have been interesting to anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I was really glad I went to that. Sweet. Those are the only two panels I went to. The rest of the day, I, I walked the floor. Um Soaked it all in. Soaked it in. I will say, I, I guess at first I was kind of expecting Star Wars Celebration exhibit floor, whatever you want to call that, to be bigger than it was. But I guess when mm-hmm. you think about it, it's like, well, this is a con that is completely just focused on one thing. It's not like Comic Con where you have tons right. of different fandoms. Really, you're only kind of getting Star Wars here. Sure, they had a section of your typical like collector store, like little booths that just sell a bunch of random kind of almost secondhand collectibles kind of thing. But Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for the most part, you're only doing what Star Wars. So I guess I get it. It's not going to be anywhere near as big as I didn't think it was going to be Comic-Con big. But still, I thought it was going to be a little bigger than it was. Not to say it was bad. Well, I mean, there's definitely the convention space to do it in, in a a large venue. But yeah, and and that and going in it, that segues into my complaint again about the whole galaxy stage thing like i i still i don't understand why they had their main panel room be the size it was like here in orlando at our convention center the orange county convention center that place is huge what's effing huge it's (laughs) bigger than san diego's oh yeah it's 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 way bigger than san diego like like, for you to say that the room was only 3700 people like Crazy. That blows my mind. That room should be bigger than Comic Con. Like it just for me, I was just like, yeah. wait, what? That's you very this? easily like, could have I, had a room holding ten thousand people, and oh, so, so, totally. And and not to say it needed to be that big, but I I'm like I just I don't understand why why set it up this way where there's you, definitely a space. You obviously have enough people that would fill that room and the demand and. I don't, I just, I don't know. It's a head scratcher. <laughs> just like, I don't, I don't get why uh, it's set up like this. I mean, I wasn't in Anaheim and I, when I was sitting in celebration waiting for that 40th anniversary panel to start, there's a, a group of people behind me. It was kind of overhearing their conversation and it sounded like they were in Anaheim two years ago. And, um, I mean, Bobby, you're probably familiar with that convention space. They were making it sound like the big stage in Anaheim was definitely bigger than the one that they had here. 
I don't know what room they used in Anaheim and how big it is, but it's as you know, it's a new room. I think that they only barely just used it the last D twenty three, and if I remember correctly, it seats somewhere around the neighborhood of seven thousand or so. Well, yeah, there you go. I mean, that's double the size. Right. Of the- I, they said that this was actually the largest celebration, like people showing up wise, yeah. in terms of attendance. That's why I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I know that convention center could definitely can accommodate, like without even batting an eye, I know that convention center yeah. can accommodate that. And I know there's the demand to fill the room easily. Easily. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't, don't understand. I don't like understand my, either. I, my head is just, I'm, I don't understand this. And then, yeah, going to the logistics, how they set it up. I will say it was, their setup is, yeah, they have basically two of the, the convention halls on the west side that we were in um, was basically just queue for panels. So you would that. go into this room, and if you wanted to go to a particular panel, you would find the queue to your panel. And uh, if there was no line, you'd just walk up and get your wristband if they hadn't run out yet. For And they would do wristbands only for like panels they felt like they had to. You know, Sure, there were, I, I didn't need a wristband to go to that music panel, for instance. Um and yeah, when it comes to the big panels in the galaxy stage, like the one I waited in line for, again, I don't, why why not just give them out the night before? And I, I don't know. Like the way Comic Con does it. Yeah. You know, like. But I, you know, if it sounds like I'm bitching a lot about celebration, I will say it was. I really liked it. I was really bummed I couldn't go the rest of the weekend. I mean, I got home basically the next day. I could tell I had this desire to be back. Like, I'm like, man, I still want to go back and be around that atmosphere some more. But nope, I got to get on an airplane. <laughs> um, but no, I, I like I said, if it's in Anaheim in two years, um, I'll probably, I'll seriously consider making that trip if I can. Yeah. Or wherever it is. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. if it's something that's doable. Right. I would like to do the whole four day experience. I will say it's annoying that the con is as expensive as it is. Um, I, I mean, I still give Comic Con credit for how cheap it is. I yeah. mean, yeah, San Diego Comic Con is cheap, and if anybody thinks it it's is. expensive, they're crazy. <laughs> the badges are cheap, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, you're gonna pay for other stuff like hotel and but I'm, out the nose. I'm talking but, about admission. But your actual admission to the con. Yeah, I'm talking about admission to the con. It is not expensive. Like it's. It's very affordable for oh, what totally. you're getting. And and there's a lot of other cons out there that it's, you know, because you've got what, like Wizard Con? And they own like, I don't know how many different cons out there. And there's a few other companies. Like a company recently bought up MegaCon here in Orlando. And I, I forget what other cons they run. And, you, and MegaCon is one of those cons where it's like, You've got a regular badge, but then you can buy a VIP badge. And, you know, you've got all these extra things you have to keep paying for to add on to your badge, basically, for different experiences. And that's one thing that Comic-Con has stayed away from. I'm very happy they have. Like, basically, you buy a badge to Comic-Con, there you go. Like, that's really it. Your odds are as good as every dude standing around you. Yeah, you know, you don't have to pay the extra to guarantee entrance into anything else and... Yeah, it's just, uh, it's so nice that they've kept it that way. Because I will say Star Wars Celebration is kind of the same deal where it's like, first of all, the badges were not cheap. They were like 65 bucks a day. But I think that's even just mon- like the day I went. I want to say Thursday. on Saturday it was even maybe more. That's, uh, and easy. that was if I bought it ahead of time. If you bought it at the door, you're going to pay more than 65 and they did like a, they call it like a Jedi Master Badge or something, which sold out. That was one of the first things to sell out. And it's oh, yeah. basically this VIP badge that I think guarantees you admittance almost into Galaxy Stage, like because you get basically a separate line. And I don't mm. know how many of those badges they sold. And I don't remember how much they were. But I have to say, after going through the experience I went through, I mean, come next celebration, if I'm going to go, I'd probably look at the price of it and go, well, it would be nice to have to worry about any lines that yeah. I you know, I know I'm going to get into the panels. Eh, maybe it's worth the price. But it is frustrating that they even do it at all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But Saturday was it, a big day. Or no, Friday. I'm sorry. Friday was a big good day. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah, I didn't think I was going to get to watch that panel. I ended up being able to watch it. I was surprised you were able to watch it. You know what was fun, though, was I feel like you watched it, I watched it, Bobby watched it, Yasha. I feel like all four of us were all watching because we all kind of like were texting and gearing up and we all were kind of getting excited. 
And it was just kind of fun knowing like we're all watching it at the same time, especially because of every, all the kind of cool stuff that happened. Like we would kind of be like, oh, that's cool. Like we would all yeah. like text each other like as we were slowly geeking out watching Friday. It was fun. It was kind of nice to do that. So yeah, I mean, coast to coast. We're talking about the last last Jedi panel was Friday. Yes. Um, <sighs> which, by the way, going, I, I was just going to say that I I wondered like how early people had to get in line for that last oh. Jedi panel. But going oh, back yeah, to that, yeah. it turned out while I was in line for 40th anniversary, I find out because I had posted something on Facebook that a friend of mine was in line, a friend that I usually see at Dragon Con every year. I'm like, oh, shit. So I go find her and we chat and she's way up at the front. But it turns out she's way up at the front because she had been in line since noon. I'm like, oh, my God, oh my God you've been in line since noon and you're spending the night and everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god! So they're talking about how oh they're gonna after I mean these are people that obviously they went out of the way to get in line at noon but they fully expected to enjoy the rest of their Thursday at celebration which of course I would anyone would want to but they're thinking oh we're still gonna get in line for Last Jedi and I'm like for Last Jedi like you probably I I don't think are you you're gonna have to get in insanely early like you guys got in at noon for the 40th anniversary panel. For Last Jedi, I mean, there's probably people already already outside. 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 a.m. You know, I, I never really heard how early people had to do, had to get in line for that. probably crazy early. Because that panel, but, and I say that because I know what happened to Anaheim because everybody was gearing up for, um, I keep wanting to say Rogue One. I don't know why Force saying, Awakens. Thank you. It's hard to believe that was only two years ago. Right. It feels like it was forever ago. Like, basically, just two yeah, years ago, know. it was only two years ago, and we had no really idea what this was all going to be like yet. Like, right. You know? Right. It's I a- remember watch, streaming that one and watching that yeah, panel. Yeah, I, and I, I streamed remember, it and watched it at home. Yeah. And it's it was, it was pretty mind-blowing watching that one because it was like, wait, what, what? And so I think that panel from two years ago in Anaheim really kind of set the bar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, okay, well, we know what we're getting into for Last Jedi. We have expectations. Like, there were expectations going into the panel for Last Jedi. I was like, right. damn, things are going to happen. I need to see these people. I need to hear what the director's going to talk about. Like, I need things to happen. My expectation level was super high Friday streaming that. I won't lie to you. I was like, things are going to happen, and it better happen. And if it doesn't, I'm going to start throwing papers all over my, my place. This is happening. So, I mean, well, I, I will say in the end. Oh, go ahead, Bobby. No, I was just going to say, to me, the first thing that I thought that happened that I found pretty cool was that uh, Ryan Johnson had came through the line. Well, and, I was going to oh, say, yeah. kind of playing into what you're saying, Michelle, about expectations. I, I feel like he had no choice but to do something like that. Right. Because two years ago, yes. I don't think, I don't know if J.J. Abrams actually showed up, but he had like pizzas delivered and shit to yeah. the line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if he said he did like for a minute or two, like to the front. And yeah, he left. might have popped in. I feel like he did. So it's but like he delivered pizzas to the whole line. And even people that I was in the line with for 40th anniversary were like commenting on that. Like th- I heard this guy <laughs> yell out at Kathleen Kennedy, like you didn't buy his pizzas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so of wow. course, you know, it's like oh, now J.J. Abrams like set a bar, set a bar. that Ryan Johnson like, right. do a something. Precedent has been set. <laughs> yeah. You need to meet and or exceed this. Right. So minimally. yeah, he shows up and what like walk to the whole, at least he walk. said in the clip I saw that he planned on walking the whole line. I don't know how much of you yeah, actually no, walked. No, he did the whole the line. Whole, like yeah. he didn't do anything else that day. Apparently, <laughs> walked the walked whole the line. line. Did signatures, took photos, shook hands, kissed babies, took photos. That's what he did. And I gotta tell you, damn, talk about throwing the bar up higher. Like right. Jesus, yeah. like. Are you kidding me? Like, as a human being, you are a rock star, dude. Like, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. It was really cool. And then, yeah, Last Jedi Penny happened. And yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it basically, I think, played out like we expected. Nothing, like, crazy yeah. happened in it. I mean, we all expected a teaser trailer. We got a teaser trailer. I mean, well, we, they had, you know, we got to see the poster, which yeah. I hadn't really thought about the poster, I guess. So, that was kind of cool. We got the new character with yeah, the new actress the new that actress I should have probably had her name pulled up. Yeah, I don't remember her name but, exactly. Um, no, it was it was cool to, to to hear things. It was cool that Josh Gad was the host for the panel because he has been really playing up on Instagram, like with um, Daisy, Daisy Ridley, Ridley. Yeah. and it's been hilarious. And that's actually how the panel started was clips from his like trying to get information out of Daisy over the past few months. 
So it was kind of fun to have him do the do the, be the host for the panel. So it was it was definitely entertaining. Like it was an entertaining panel to watch and to listen to, and I don't know, it was a lot of fun. And then yeah, so he's like, oh well, I brought you guys something, and then they showed the poster, and it's like this picture of Ray with a lightsaber, and we're like, oh, that's that's pretty awesome. And he's like, pan out, and, and then like you, the room erupts, and I was like, what? Everybody's brains exploded. It was amazing, but. Yeah, and then it was kind of like, he was like, okay, that's it. And we're like, wait, there's not a trailer? Are you effing, wait, you're, you're fucking with us right now, right? Like, no, you brought, you brought a trailer. You'd be stupid not bring a trailer. This place will riot. We'll burn this place down. Right. <laughs> and then, yeah, I was like, oh, thank God we get a trailer. And they're going to play it twice. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> like, yeah, mm. it was awesome. So, yeah, yeah, there was a teaser trailer. <laughs> Or you just skip the poster. Fuck the poster. You can get it once and oh. you don't care. That's no, I didn't get, you, I didn't get the poster mentality. either. You didn't get a poster, so you're like, fuck it, I'm not doing it. You know what? I found Screw myself watching shit. it thinking, those poor people in Celebration stage probably aren't getting one. Nope. No <laughs> I, posters I, for that. My heart goes out to Celebration from now on. That nobody in there gets <laughs> gets any of the shit that they waited for. Nobody gets It's because they weren't worthy. <laughs> uh yeah, no, I mean, the poster looks awesome. Like, it's ridiculous. You know, I mean, sure, the shot of Ray with the lightsaber, I'm like, okay, that's interesting looking. It's kind of throwbacky. It's kind of throwbacky. It's I'm not cool. sure what to think of this. and But yeah, it pans out, and I'm like, I mean, it's simple, but yeah, it's pretty oh, It's pretty it's, badass. It's pretty mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, it's it's awesome. Bobby, you've and, been so yeah. quiet. <laughs> no, I'm just, you guys are going, and, you, and Michelle, you're gushing so much. <laughs> it sounds, it's cool to hear, but I... Wait, what, why are you surprised at me gushing? Because uh, I don't think I've really heard you gush about Star Wars, honestly. Not to a certain degree. I, I, I do like, in my own weird way. Because Rogue, Rogue One, you were kind of like, I don't know, me and David were only on the hype train for the longest time for that. And then it was like, by the time you saw it, you were like all in. But leading you up to it. You cannot blame me sure. for being a little like on the fence about Rogue One. Come on. Oh. We did not know how that bad boy was going to play out. Oh, no. no I'm I, sorry. I can. I, I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that'll that'll actually play into my conversation. You know what I'm going to end up saying about this Last Jedi trailer. And I bet I don't want to get to that yet because we're not there yet. But right. come on, I, I still when I heard your reaction and Yasha's reaction to that Rogue One trailer, I just I didn't know what to say because I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, that trailer looks amazing. You were ready <laughs> like, to unfriend me. This like, is <laughs> this is footage in a Star Wars film. We have never seen anything like this, but yet it's. Star Wars that we know so well because it's old Star Wars, but yet these, sh- I mean, the shots and and the look. I mean, it was it was everything I could ask for. <laughs> and and then you and Yasha talked about it, and you're like, well, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I don't. If my mind could explode, <laughs> it would yeah. explode. I don't get it. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. Because <laughs> I think Bobby was in the same boat as me. Like totally. I just, I just still to this day. I'm like, did, you, did you guys not watch the same trailer? We are punch drunk now. At this yeah, point. okay. Like, Let's bring this back on track. Oh, so, I've had like four hours of sleep. I least. know. So, but no, really. I mean, I, I still, yeah. Okay, well, I'm gushing now. God damn it! <laughs> I'm gushing now about Last Jedi. Jeez. So, yeah, I guess we're going to talk about the teaser then. Uh, so going from that, I'll just segue right into The Last Jedi. I will say, look, I before I say any of this, I can't wait to Last Jedi. It's going to uh. be awesome. I'm not, and nothing I'm about to say is going to be like oh I have any skepticism about Last Jedi. But, I mean, it's I'm just going to say that I didn't watch The Last Jedi teaser and have a reaction like I did for Rogue One. <laughs> like... First of all, we don't see nearly as much in the Last Jedi teaser. It's just a little teaser, and there's not a lot of footage in it. And, I mean, sure, it looks great. I'm, I've am i watched it a few times. Like, I'm super pumped. But if you were to ask me, like, hey, would you rate your reaction to the first time you saw Rogue One footage in Last Jedi? I'd be like, Rogue One was... I was bouncing off the walls. This is awesome, but, I mean, we're not seeing much yet. It's, it's kind of okay. This makes me happy, because you've actually set me up for my... My thought process. Is I on mean, this one. 
it, it looks great. It looks very Ryan Johnson. Like you've got that one shot that is so looper you know, of the hand and the rocks and, yeah. and it looks very different for a star Wars movie, which I'm all into. So that's great. But I mean, we just don't see a lot in it, you know? So it's, it's nothing against any, I have no, it's not like I watched this teaser and I'm like, Oh, now I'm feeling skeptical a lot less about less Jedi. No, 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 not at all. I just, it looks great, but I, I look forward to seeing more. It's really my takeaway from it. Well, I loved it. Like, I've watched it probably like 10 times. Like, I loved it. Like, I think it's great. Like, I was losing my mind when they showed it on uh, on the panel. Oh, that's that's cool. Again, I mean, for you to lose your mind over Last Jedi, but not Rogue One, I just, I, I yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> okay. I just, I think for me, because watching it, with this new director, it does have this totally different feel and it than what we've seen traditionally. And I feel like this was this was a true teaser trailer. Like it's giving you just very quick glimpses into things. And it starts out kind of slow and kind of slowly edges you into it and then it moves really 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 quick. You're getting really quick shots of things, like very quick, very sm- like small images, just enough to make you go, "Wait, what? What? Question this, question that." And I like that. Like, it's a teaser trailer. That's the point. I don't want to know much more. Like, I want to be like, oh, my God, what? Did I just see that? Did that just? No, I did not just see that. That's amazing. And that's what that did for me. And then the other thing for me is I feel like even though it had these moments of like, oh, my gosh, okay, he's back. Oh, my gosh, there's things exploding in a bay. And, like, it, it gets me going. At the same time, like, I kind of like the idea that this is a little more subdued. Because for me, and and as weird as it sounds, like, I feel that Empire Strikes Back is probably my favorite film, right? I'll be honest. It just is. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like this film of these three sets is going to have a more subdued tone to it, but it's going to be very... I think it's going to be really dimensional and I think it's going to be a really deep film. I think this one's going to be of that kind of Empire Strikes Back level. Does that make sense? Uh, It makes total sense. And I feel like I got that, not confirmation, but I feel like I got that from this teaser trailer. Like, oh my God. So I think I'm thinking this is probably going to be more upon the level of the way that film was in a way Mm -hmm. in that series. This one's going to be the same way too. And I'm like, which for me is just, I'm like, cool this could be really good this one actually might want to be my new favorite who knows obviously not until christmas but it's just one of those things like it just it was almost like it was like vindication i was like okay i think i'm thinking the right way like i think i'm thinking this is gonna go kind of in this direction and that's exciting and i feel like i got that from the tone of the way this teaser trailer was done and it just is nice just i'm like okay this is this, this is gonna be good i got a good feeling i have a really good feeling this is gonna be good please please no, I, I, everything so, yeah. you're saying makes sense. That's that's where I'm at with this. But I love the trailer, and I especially loved it because like then I saw this weird thing because everybody's like you know they have to analyze every inch of the trailer. A little too dude, much, yeah. Yeah, a little too much. <laughs> Almost to a point, it's like, well, I think like, you're stretching uh, things. Just all the, I mean, before you even say what you're saying, just all all this you know jazz about like his last line in the trailer, and I'm just well, like. Everyone calm the fuck out. Yeah, everybody needs to calm the hell down about that a little bit. Yeah, but anyway, go on. But I was going to say, so the shot of Ray with a lightsaber training on the like rocky side of the cliff of the island, and then Luke's behind her, she's and there's like- Whipping this, that lightsaber around like a crazy person. She's whipping around like a crazy person. <laughs> you know, there's this rock formation that's in front of her, and this one guy was like, is it me, or is that like Ghost Force Yoda on top of the rocks? No, it's not. You're f- holy crap. Is that Ghost Force Yoda? No, that's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And so I've literally been looking at this photo. <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting obsessed. I'm not. I am. Well, because he literally threw this bomb on me, this dude from Instagram. Thank you very much. And I'm like, holy fuck. That could be Star Force. That could be. That could be Jedi Force Yoda. No, it's not. It's totally not. It's just rocks. It's just rocks. That's not. Oh my god, I think it is. Like, and literally, I stare at this photo, and these are my. I go back and forth within seconds. I'm like, is this it's rocks. It's totally rocks. But yeah, it's so it's kind of fun. Like, it's like this fun build up. I'm like, oh, that could be so amazing. Please do not. So, Bobby, what'd you think of the teaser? That's where I'm at. 
Yeah, I, I think for me, uh, like as both of you have sort of talked about, I, I'm somewhere where I can agree with both of you because when I saw the Rogue One stuff, to me that was just like on a different level, and it it and it had more to prove because of the fact that it was something doing something brand new that they hadn't d- done before, so it had to kind of um, make itself pop and, and and have it a little bit more uh, in a way to show stylistically. And so from what a story point from what you've been getting, it's just been more or less like showing you, okay, this is, this is a new chapter. This is something different. But whereas with the, the last Jedi, it seems as though it's like, okay, we know this is a continuation of the, Skywalker story and we don't really have to show you much to get you excited because we don't we have less to prove with this part so it it didn't excite as much as the Rogue One stuff did by nature of the fact that they were purposefully uh, not showing you much It, it, it was in effect a teaser as it's as it's meant to be and I think that that's what um I did like about it is because I thought as a teaser, it worked really well. It really gave you a sense of what you're looking at a little bit of the, the scope of it in terms of seeing different, a different planet and being able to um, get a sense of where Luke is in, in this, in this movie without really giving you everything about it. And the way it leaves off with him saying the line, you're just kind of like, Okay, so what does that mean actually? And, and you can't help but to wonder what direction he's going towards when he says something like that. So it 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 it, it teased well and enough to make me feel like um, I just probably need to see one trailer after this and then be done. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could agree with that. I don't yeah, know if I, totally I will resist that. any more than that, but. <laughs> I should, but I'm not I totally going to. would be. I would totally be okay without watching any more. I mean, in a perfect world, honestly, I, yeah, I, it would be tempting, but I'm not going to do that. I, there's no totally way. Totally going to watch every single thing that comes out. Because you've admitted this point, Bobby, you're not pulling uh, Force Awakens, right? Like, you're not pulling a Bobby. No, <laughs> you're not no. going to pull yourself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, again, I, I'm crazy pumped for Last Jedi. I think it's going to be awesome. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I think the tone could be really interesting. It's it's going to be cool to see what Ryan Johnson does and how Ryan Johnson this movie ends up really being. And uh, I'm super pumped. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, it was a teaser trailer. It doesn't show much, and I, I'm happy with that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not upset that they didn't show more. I also don't no. want to give off that impression. I'm totally happy they showed no. as little as they did. But yeah, I'm just saying, like in terms of reaction it wasn't like anything happened in the trailer or the teaser that i was like holy shit like i mean right. yeah it's just a teaser it, no i mean it's basically like the force awakens teaser was except with the force awakens teaser we had never seen anything in this new basically right. Yeah. Right. world so i mean even just that wide shot on jakku and then you see the the crash star destroyer i was just like oh my yeah. god this is holy shit this looks awesome right. you could have stopped the teaser right then i would have been happy <laughs> but uh yeah yeah, I mean, that had the benefit of being completely new. And yeah, like you just said, we know that's a con- this is a continuation of that story, and we kind of know what we're going to get. But of course we don't, but... Right. right. No. I mean, I, yeah. The thing is, if they really wanted us to have a holy crap moment, they easily probably could have put something in oh, there. Of course. I'm but, sure there's tons of things. So they really did glad they didn't. Want to just tease right. Us. And again, oh. I say this is the teaser. And again, I'm also kind of hoping, even with whatever the next trailer is, that they don't give us too, too much. Like, I would love for this to really develop as a story again. And I hate to keep using this, but the way that Empire Strikes Back, like, I, I want this film to just like just knock me off my ass. I want things to happen to be like, holy hell, they didn't even hint at that. Like, I want things to just surprise the shit out of me. And that's and why I think I'm so excited. So like they give you just all I needed and that's it. I want you to knock me on my ass. Yeah, and I and with that said, I agree and I want the same thing. And I if I do have a worry, and it's very minor. <laughs> 
But like, and I'm saying this as someone who watched Force Awakens, I completely recognize how it paralleled A New Hope, and I'm totally cool with it. Like, I had no problems with that. I know some people bitched, and I thought it was fine. No, did you? But yeah. at the same time, if I find, it, I'm I'm somewhat worried that Last Jedi might be guilty of the same thing, and if it ends up paralleling Empire a little too much, then I think I might start to get, all right, guys, come on. I, like, I agree on again, that. Again, I get that this is Star Wars. Like, you're not going to, divert too far from base the formula you know it's a star wars movie i get that but at the same time i am looking forward to something new and i don't want basically a oh, okay so now instead of luke training with yoda now we've got ray training with luke and and then she has to go save somebody kind of like he did and you know i you know i it's somewhat i could see that happening and i hope it doesn't i actually don't think it will um, either. Uh, and so right. I'm not really, really worried about it. But of course, you know, that's what a lot of people are speculating. Yeah. And I, my reaction is, let's just hope that that's not the case. I, again, not that that would make it a bad movie. I'm just, I don't know. I just want something even more fresh. No, and I fully agree. And like, while I'm saying yes, as much as I'm happy with Empire, like... I don't want it to just fall in the same footsteps as Empire. I don't want to. Yeah, and I don't. I, don't. And I didn't I, think that's what you were saying. I'm and just, I don't feel... and. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be fresh. I think this is going to be... I think there's going to be some really unexpected twists and turns in this. And I love that. Like, that makes me just so giddy inside. And I just... I don't... I, I on, the, on the other side, like, no. They cannot reinvent the Star Wars wheel, per se. Mm -hmm. But I think we're going to... I think I'm going to be very pleasantly happy with this one. I really, really do. And I say that not like I was disappointed with the others. But... All right, no, I, yeah. I'm confident that this can't, I don't think they're just going to be like just falling into the same old footsteps right. the same old patterns I don't think so either just throwing it, that but out it there is, I know it's, it's in the back of my head too <laughs> yeah. but I tried to ignore that little voice and listen to the other louder voices I'm right there with you so yeah sound like you were going to say something Bobby no just uh, pretty much like going you guys I don't really think it's going to happen and I think I've seen in articles where Ryan Johnson or, or other people who are close to the film have said it's different than anything that they have seen, uh, some from the previous installments. And yeah, that could be just sort of, you know, talk that they say because right. they're associated with it. But it did seem genuine in the sense that it's not just going to be repeating the beats of empire or of that nature. And, and, you know, it's, it would benefit them to, kind of loosen the reins on someone like Ryan Johnson and let him really kind of play with things and do something different because you're not going to, I mean, people, they're smart enough to me at, at Lucasfilm to know that um, there were those thoughts of people and, and the complaints of people who did feel as though it mirrored a, a new hope a little bit too much for the force awakens. So I don't think that they would go into this one trying to do the same sort of thing and, there's other ways to tell a, a middle story. And right. I think that they know that as well and aren't just going to try and repeat those beats and try and give us a, a familiar uh, feeling to that and, and really go for something different. Well, real quick, I was wondering, because Bobby, you watched Star Wars Rebels, right? Yeah. So you heard the announcement that they made that season four is the last one. Mm-hmm. I was wondering, like, are you happy, sad, mixed? No. Um, Do you feel like that's a good note for them to end on? Uno well, unofficially, it was. It seemed like that was always sort of the plan or close to the plan and that it was not supposed to be a show that goes on for uh, an extended amount of time because this all uh, whole Rebel show is supposed to take place prior to episode four. Mm -hmm. and it, you see everything happening there mm -hmm. and you knew it took place a little bit before or right the formation of the the rebel alliance so it, it was always meant to kind of be that birth of that rebel alliance and be able to tell that story and if you've followed it along you kind of see as each season's going it's getting closer to that point right. so you knew that it was going to either end within the fourth season or the fifth season at most and to me, it was the perfect uh, time to end it. And uh, one of the, the guys behind it, Dave Filoni, he had said that 
he's going out on his own terms by telling the story in the way that he wants to tell it and end it at the time that he thinks that it should end as opposed to trying to keep going on and milking it and just pulling it and making the story go down. He already had this vision of how long it should go and where it should end. So uh, I think it's perfect. Cool. cool. I was just wondering what your take was because I, I thought I remember you, you've you been watching the show pretty much the whole time yeah. it's been going on. So I just wanted to see kind of if you had any opinions on that. Because I know oh, that yeah, got announced at a, like officially, officially announced right. at Celebration. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. A couple quick things, a couple quick things since we're almost out of time. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 looks awesome and I can't fucking yes! wait. Uh, oh. it's in, it is interesting this this movement in Star Wars in general to not be so cut and dry with good versus evil. And I mean, I've somewhat even experienced this more recently. And so have you Bobby reading lost stars yep. where in lost yep. stars, they, this was a, a star Wars novel where you had the perspective of two kids growing up on a planet that was, you know, had just been what annexed, I guess, by the empire and mm-hmm. they grow up in a world where, hey, you know, we want to be in the Imperial Academy and they go into the Imperial Academy and, you know, they become officers and, you know, one of them, you know, maybe goes a different route. And but yeah, like you have this perspective of someone who is like doesn't really necessarily understand that. Oh, well, the guy that running this this whole deal is really not the best guy (laughs) and you know and you kind of get a different perspective of things and now it's this battlefront game there they seem to even be more so like taking that perspective of this is someone in the empire and you know not just like oh i'm a bad i'm an evil bad guy (laughs) like you know i'm i'm a person who believes in this cause and i don't know it's interesting that there is this movement in star wars in general to kind of like no, 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 to make it a little more complex, like what's going yeah. on. So right. it's kind of cool. But Star Wars Battlefront 2 looks awesome. And then speaking of books, um, a line of books was announced, I think, at Star Wars Celebration, um, Journey to Star Wars The Last Jedi, just like they did for Force Awakens, which Lost Stars was one of those books. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is going to be a set of books for, it's called, labeled Journey to Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi. One of them I'm super excited about, which is going to be a Captain Phasma book. Oh. If, there, if there were ever a character that needed oh. a backstory, it is yes. Phasma. And I cannot wait to read that book. Okay, that's kind of cool. That's going to be cool. Um, there was also a book, Leia, Princess of Alderaan. And Legends of Luke Skywalker, which it sounds like will probably involve a lot of some storyline, at least between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens involving him. Okay. So that could be cool. But Phasma, I'm definitely pumped about. And I think there's also going to be a four issue run, a Marvel run of comics with Captain Phasma too. And this is all canon now. So that's awesome. I'm, I'm pumped about that. That's stuff. exciting. Crap. Yeah. I kind of want to start picking these things up now. Shit. I've been doing the audio. Awesome. I've been doing the audio book thing that Bobby has suggested, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking it. Yeah. It's, it's and like we mentioned before, with Star Wars audio books. It's not just the guy reading. Like, I mean, I've been, I'm listening to Aftermath right now, which you've already finished, Bobby. And the guy mm-hmm. that reads Aftermath, like, I don't know. I mean, I've worked with voiceover actors, and I get that many of them are way more talented than they get credit for. But listening to this guy and the voices he has to do <laughs> for this entire <laughs> book. I'm like, man, I I hope that there are awards for you guys. <laughs> like awards for the year for audio. You should get an Oscar for this shit. Like, <laughs> Whatever it is, the Oscar contention for this is yours. It is impressive listening to this dude pull out all of these voices, male and female. And I mean, yeah. this guy, it's it's crazy. I, I don't have his name in front of me. It's, this guy's Mark, ridic- Thompson. Mark Thompson. This guy's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's funny to you that you said that because... I'd finished Aftermath and I'd finished Life Debt, so I just have the last one to go. I can't remember the name of the third book, but um, in that trilogy anyway. Right. And um, But I picked up Thrawn when it came out last mm. Tuesday, and as soon as I started it, and the you know you hear the music and then you hear the guy say, Star Wars, you know, Thrawn, and he's in narration by... Mark Thompson. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. This is going to be great. I'm starting to get side- excited about book narrators now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new level. Yeah. I know. 
it's pretty funny. <laughs> but seriously, Michelle, you got to listen to this guy. It's crazy. Like, yo, I'm curious now. Yeah, and they do. He just did it, Han Solo too. Oh yeah, he does. I think I'd already heard one line where he did like a like a Han Solo like impression thing or something. I forget what it was in Aftermath. Yeah. And I remember hearing it's very quick, but I was like, man, that sounded like Harrison Ford. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy <laughs> and yeah in, in the star wars books i mean they do like some sound effects they do background mm-hmm. music you mean and... they're not just going pew 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 no yeah pew, he's, he's pew. not just making he's not pulling the uh police academy like, <laughs> what's his name <laughs> <laughs> that would be a talent um <laughs> But yeah, they do kind of like ambient sounds of whatever room or place they're in and stuff. It's cool. Like, I, I'm digging listening to them. Nice. Though I will say, so far aftermath, I'm like, man, this, I'm having to get my, I'm having to make my way through this. A little bit. Like this narrator is amazing. So far, the book. Mm, it's, <laughs> it's a little boring. Lost, Lost Stars is better. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. But I think the 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 whole thing, at least from. I, I can get why in the beginning the perspective of why a lot of people thought the first uh, aftermath book wasn't good because it was the first thing that came out and I think a lot of people were expecting yeah. the story of the main characters of some sort and you get all these brand new characters and you're like who are these people like where, where's Han where's Luke where's Leia and you're just like okay and then the story you just it takes a while for it to really get moving and then um, at a certain point it does pick up and. There's a particular character that I find really interesting who's actually uh, – she's on the Empire side. Mm-hmm. And her story kind of continues throughout the whole uh, three books as well. So I'm kind of curious to see where she ends up once I start the third book. But, um, yeah, I think I, it does definitely take some time to get into it all, really. Yeah, it does. But I'll get there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Eventually. Because I do want to finish that trilogy. Because I'm just, uh, even I watched Force Awakens again more recently, and I find myself more and more like, okay, I want to know how we got to this. Like, right? Well, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I just watched it this weekend, and again, I was just like, God, this movie's so good. Because there is a character in the Force Awakens that's in the book, but you wouldn't really necessarily know it unless you kind of put the two together. Right. right. All right. Well, with that, it is time to wrap things up. Thanks. Special bonus Star Wars. Thanks episode. everybody who's been listening to this uh, special bonus episode about Star Wars Celebration and Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Um, we'll be back next weekend reviewing. I don't know what we're reviewing next weekend. I haven't even looked at the calendar. It's a mystery. It Based on what's coming out, I would probably guess it's the. I think it's called Freeform or Free Fire. Fire? Oh, Fire? oh yeah, Brie yeah, Larson. Yeah, yeah. yeah Brie Larson, oh, Army Hammer. Yeah, that one. The big, okay. the big like 1970s like theme, shoot 'em up, kill 'em all. Right, it right, looks right. fun. It actually, look fun, it looks right. a lot of fun. Um, do you get your uh, Guardians of the Galaxy ticket yet, Bobby? No, in fact, <gasps> I, I was planning on doing that today. You gotta do that, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, it makes me feel still- so happy that I. I mean, I didn't get to get the 7 p.m. showing on Thursday night, which I'm kind of bummed because I'm being picky and wanting to see it in Dolby. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I could have easily have gotten a 7 p.m. showing in another theater, but by the time I thought about, it, oh, fuck, we need to buy tickets, like I'm so that 7 p.m. at Dolby Cinema was kind of full. And I'm like, all right, I, I did the 1030 p.m. in Dolby Cinema since we've only got one of those in town. But it's been so nice since I bought them. I'm like, all right. I've got the tickets. We have reserved seats. I don't have to stress. I don't have to get any lines. I have to, oh, it's going to be so, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I might have to have that a Red Bull before the movie to keep myself awake because it'll be late because I'm an old man, but I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried if I don't get Thursday night. I think I can if I try tonight, but um, I was sort of almost getting set on seeing it Friday morning just because yeah. it's, um, I don't know how it is for you guys, but like, here it's if i go to that dolby at night it's like i think it's like 17 18 oh, it's bucks expensive, dude yeah it's oh, yeah. like the same yeah. here but if i go in the morning it's like 11 bucks yep. so i'm like uh, i think i can maybe wait and save that yeah because i think so i did a, the dolby once in the middle of the day and it was like 12 it was much nice and much it was cheaper yeah but yeah I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we're going to get out of here. My name is David Lotz. Uh, Bobby Jackson. I'm Michelle Curry. Thanks for listening. Bizzle, 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 bizzle.